Today we are coastal foraging on the islands of Washington State. While the scenes are relaxing, it's a race against the rising tide, as we dig for butter clams and gather kelp. We also collect seaweed growing on rocks. Yes, it's edible! We encounter other creatures and plants along the way, and even eat flowers. It's my first time coastal foraging and I'm super excited to share this nature-filled experience with you. And when we get home, Mommy will make seaweed soup and clam chowder. Greetings from Washington State! Our family friend brought us here. Uh, we did like about a two hour drive. Super excited to finally get out and do some domestic traveling. Right now it's a little past 10 a.m. Crunchy with every step. <laughs> There's a dog here getting all curious and up into the clams. Yeah. Look, there's a crab! <laughs> it's your house. We should close it. Good night. Woohoo! I'm not wearing exactly the right shoes. Tomio brought up plastic bags for me to put over my shoes so they don't get super wet in the inside. Alright, so we're gonna be getting some butter clam and he's digging. Clams, how should get on top of the oil? For, for one day? Right. Each day. Each day. Oh, is this an urchin? Oh yeah. It's an urchin, sea urchin. The dead one. Here's a butter clam close-up. It, it's a little bit open right now. If I touch it here, it's gonna start closing its shell. Tick -a -tick -a -tick. Tick -tick -a -tick. Look at the curves. After you're done, you have to cover the hole back up. And when the tide is higher, the water goes up to here. We're gonna dig a hole closer to the water. And we didn't test it. It's a hermit crab. Look at the beautiful color of this. I would love to do a watercolor painting using these colors. I see gray blue, a creamy off white, and an orange brown. Dried my hands off and. Woo! It smells so salty, earthy. <laughs> Mom, you found a crab. <laughs> Hello. Ooh, yep, Goodbye. <laughs> it's quite a number of white birds over there. It looks like seagulls. It may look very still, but when you look at the ground and just observe, little things are moving. Sometimes water will squirt here and there. To get these clams, I got the shellfish and seaweed license for Walmart's uh, recreation area. Bigger crab right here! Okay. So he put some salt water in here and uh, overnight the clams will spit out the sand and then tomorrow we'll eat it. Over there was where we were getting the butter clam on our way back to the car. Uh, there are a bunch of mussels. I thought they were dead because it's in the sun, but actually they're not. Because when the tide comes back up, they get wet, rehydrated. So all those rocks, they are covered in mussels. Wow. What is this? What is so our family friend just grabbed a bunch of these, like a full handful, and stuffed it in his mouth. Ham toil? Ham toil. If you look at it, it's growing in the world. Mm. Oh, very salty. <laughs> very valuable in Korea. Very expensive. Expensive in Korea, but free over here at this moment. Wow. I hope a dog didn't pee on that. It's not just salty, it's a little bit of a freshness to it. it. Tastes like a salty pear, but a pear that's not very sweet. It's just like... <laughs> He's eating these flowers too. In Korean, it's called hedangwa. There's a bee in here. <laughs> Doesn't really 
really tastes like much. Up next, we harvest seaweed. It's a race against the rising tide. Mommy O is over there. She didn't want to harvest the seaweed with us. The sand is not straight, it's very bumpy. Ooh, it gets slippery. You gotta watch your step. Gonna watch how he harvests and then I'll follow suit. He just hacks it. He brought a basket uh, for me. Well, Mommy O prepared the plastic bag. Now that I know you could use a basket, I'll use a basket next time. Reusable. Menbalo kado kinchanto? Yeah. And then balo where is it? I'm just gonna go barefoot. Okay, I was just told to make holes in the bag so when we put the seaweed in there, it drains out the moisture. Whoa, what is that thing over there? This. Whoa, it's pink. <laughs> it's cold. I'm going to, you know, make it dry up about the water. Oh, there's something pink over here. According to current rules in Washington, you can collect up to 10 pounds of seaweed per day per person. Only a knife, scissors, or similar may be used. No rakes, no forks allowed. Just like with the clams, you need a license to harvest seaweed. In our experience, the butter clam and seaweed are in the same license. My underwear got wet. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Washington henyo, not Jeju henyo. We've been here for about 10 to 15 minutes and already the tide has noticeably come in. And the thing is, the seaweed that's out there, it's nicer. It's easier to grab. The seaweed that's closer to the shore, it's mixed in with these long grasses. I don't know what you call them, but further out, there's less of this uh, long grass. We're gonna get two kinds of seaweed, the one that was floating in the water, and then the other seaweed, it's gonna be the ones on the rock. Yes, some of these are very edible, I just learned. Gotta be careful when you walk with the knife. And some of these rocks, very jagged. Just gotta watch your step. Owie. <laughs> if the wave keeps going back and forth, it'll be harder to see what you're stepping on. Probably should have walked on those rocks, it's softer. Let's go that way. Yeah, these green rocks are much easier on the foot. And it's not slippery because it's dried. Whoa! This seaweed is iridescent! At first I thought it was oil, but no, it's not. It's like stuck on there. Look at how much the water came up. We were over there harvesting. But now that's more than knee deep. Oh, the rocks. Ow. <laughs> Owie. It's like those acupuncture shoes. <laughs> Ouchies. Walking on these rocks is like getting a very hard foot massage. Uh, maybe two hard foot massages in one. I'm gonna wear these shoes, walk back to where he is, and then get some more seaweed. Oh yeah, much easier with the rain boots on and much faster. Wow, look it! It's springtime only, huh? It's kind of seaweed, you know? It looks a little bit like a wig. Like a messy wig. A wig that needs some good combing. Oh, what is this little thing here? Is it a shrimp? Wow, it's green. Alien-like. It's better to get the ones that are closer to the water. You know these stems in the middle? In the beginning of May, those are softer. 
Shit. Ah, this is the root. So we, we just put it back over there so it grows. Later, I learned that these root looking things are called holdfast. They anchor onto hard surfaces like rocks. Turns out you have to cut at least one foot above the holdfast for winged kelp and saccharina. For bull kelp, cut at least two feet above this bulb. Be sure to leave holdfast on the beach. On our way back home, we're stopping by the farm stand to grab some snacks. The air smells like ice cream. Artichoke relish, peach cobbler, pickled asparagus. They sell ice cream made by Cascade Glacier and Lopez Island. Lopez Island hand makes ice cream here in Washington. Cascade Glacier is an Oregon-based ice creamery. They make it in Anacotes. They also sell various shaved ice. This one's the Toffee Coffee Crunch. I got coffee because you like coffee. Mm. Tastes like what it's named. But it's not like a strong coffee flavor. It's a subtle, delicate coffee flavor. It's very likable. Even if you don't like coffee much, I think you'll like this. Nearby is the Naval Air Station. So most likely, you'll see a couple planes fly by. And if you don't see them, you'll definitely hear them. Otherwise, it's fairly quiet and you can enjoy blue skies on the picnic tables. Just got home and looking at the bucket, they're popping out. It looks like uh, they're sticking a tongue out. What happens if we touch it? Whoa! They're going fast. Kiss, kiss. Mommyo is rinsing the seaweed. The big parts goes here, the little bit she cuts off and puts it on this tray. Mamiyo will make a soup with those, the bigger pieces, and these ones, what are you gonna do? Perhaps stir fry. <laughs> wow, look at that big piece. So glossy. Cutting the seaweed into smaller bits. Mamiyo added some sesame oil. Two tablespoons of Korean soy sauce. And some water. Oh, it turned very green. Lighter green. It becomes brown again later. The first time Mommy O cooked with the seaweed, our family friend harvested it for us. We didn't go with him. And the soup turned out so deep. How would you describe the flavor of the first seaweed soup you made with this? You said deep. Yeah, it tastes real deep. Is it like Socrates deep? Is it philosophical? Is it gonna taste the same as the last time Mamio cooked with it or different? For some reason, this time it doesn't taste as deep. Different kind of seaweed. Mm. This one doesn't have in the uh, something chewy in the middle, just soft. So I didn't uh, boil much. Simmer much. Oh, what are you making right now? Manhattan cream chowder. Next day, having the seaweed soup with quinoa. I'm thinking to do some painting on these shells and picking them out. These ones still have some bits that need to be picked out. Um, these ones are cleaner. Before painting on them, need to clean them a bit further. What I make with the shells might have to be another video. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed coastal foraging with us. I learned a lot from my first harvest and there's still so much to learn. Remember, before you forage, well at least in Washington, get your license. And be sure to check updates on when and where you can collect your goodies. Some areas might be too polluted to forage. Oh, and check the tide schedule in advance. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. Ooh, there's a worm. There's a worm right here. Oh, my, my foot got stuck here. 
my foot got stuck. <laughs> you gotta lift it up. These slightly more wet rocks, they're a joy to walk on. These ones are super dry. This one's comfy. 